Good evening. Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to Evening Prayer from St. Michael and All Angels Parish. We begin with the opening sentence on page 59 of our Books of Common Prayer. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our canticle, O gracious light. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven. O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O Giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, merciful Lord, to your faithful people, pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The appointed psalm for this evening is Psalm 119, reading verses 25 to 48, beginning on page 629. My soul cleaves to the dust. Give me life according to your word. I have confessed my ways, and you answered me. Instruct me in your statutes. Make me understand the ways of your commandments, that I may meditate on your marvelous ways. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Take from me the way of lying. Let me find grace through your law. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I have set your judgments before me. I hold fast to your decrees. O Lord, let me not be put to shame. I will run the way of your commandments. For you have set my heart at liberty. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes. 
and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. I shall keep it with all my heart. Make me go in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees, and not to unjust gain. Turn my eyes from watching what is worthless. Give me life in your ways. Fulfill your promise to your servant, which you make to those who fear you. Turn away the reproach which I dread, because your judgments are good. <clears throat> Behold, I long for your commandments. In your righteousness, preserve my life. Let your loving kindness come to me, O Lord, and your salvation according to your promise. Then shall I have a word for those who taunt me, because I trust in your words. Do not take the word of truth out of my mouth, for my hope is in your judgments. I shall continue to keep your law. I shall keep it forever and ever. I will walk at liberty because I study your commandments. I will tell of your decrees before kings and will not be ashamed. I delight in your commandments, which I have always loved. I will lift up my hands to your commandments and I will meditate on your statutes. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading, a reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 6, beginning at verse 5. Pleasant speech multiplies friends, and a gracious tongue multiplies courtesies. Let those who are friendly with you be men, but let your advisors be one in a thousand. When you gain friends, gain them through testing, and do not trust them hastily. For there are friends who are such when it suits them. But they will not stand by you in time of trouble. And there are friends who change into enemies and tell of a quarrel to your disgrace. And there are friends who sit at your table. But they will not stand by you in time of trouble. When you are prosperous, they become your second self and lord it over your sins. But if you are bored loose, they turn against you and hide themselves from you. Keep away from your enemies and be on guard over your friends. Faithful friends are a steady shelter. Whoever finds one has found a treasure. Faithful friends are beyond the price. No amount can balance their worth. Faithful friends are life-saving medicine. And those who fear the Lord will find them. Those who fear the Lord direct their friendship right. For as they are, so are their neighbors also. 
The Magnificat, found on page 67. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in you, O God, my Savior, for you have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things, and the rich you have sent away empty. You have come to the help of your servant Israel, for you have remembered your promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our second reading, a reading from the book of Matthew, Chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry, and they began to pluck heads of grain and, and to eat. When the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is lawful on the Sabbath. He said to them, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and ate the bread of presence, which it was not lawful for him or his companions to eat, but only for the priest. Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath, the priests in the temple break the Sabbath and yet are guiltless? I tell you something greater than the temple is here. But if you had known what this means, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. He left that place and entered their synagogue. A man was there with a withered hand. And they asked him, Is it lawful to cure on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him? He said to them, Suppose one of you has one sheep, and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath. Will you not lay hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable is a human being than a sheep? So it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to them, Then he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and it was restored as sound as the other. But the Pharisees went out and conspired against him. How to destroy him? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now turn to the canticle, and we will recite the canticle, the song, this a song of creation, found on page 50. Glorify the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, ye angels and all powers of the Lord, O heavens and all waters above the heavens, sun and moon and stars of the sky, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, every shower of rain and fall of dew. All winds and fire and heat, winter and summer, 
glorify Him. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. Glorify the Lord, O chill and cold, drops of dew and flakes of snow, frost and cold, ice and sleet. Glorify the Lord. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. Glorify the Lord, O nights and days, O shining light and enfolding dark, storm clouds and thunderbolts, glorify the Lord. Praise Him and highly exalt Him. Let the earth glorify the Lord. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. Glorify the Lord, O mountains and hills, and all that grows upon the earth. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. Glorify the Lord, O springs of water, seas and streams, O whales and all that move in the water, O birds of the air, glorify the Lord. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. Glorify the Lord, O beasts of the wild, and all you flocks and herds, O men and women everywhere, glorify the Lord. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. Let the people of God glorify Him. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. Glorify the Lord, O priests and servants of the Lord. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. Glorify the Lord, O spirits and souls of the righteous. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. You that are holy and humble of heart, glorify the Lord. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. Let us glorify the Lord, Son, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. In the fulfillment of His power, glorify the Lord. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. Our message this evening comes from a gospel reading from Matthew chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. Have you ever hosted an event of some sort? It may have been even a church function. Put a lot of personal effort and time into it, only to recognize that all your energies were wasted because it did not achieve its goals. The effort to get things done on time made you act crazy and behave in ways that were unbecoming of you as a child of God. Furthermore, your actions and words upset everyone else and even may have damaged some of your relationships. And, the truth be told, in some instances, this damage can be permanent, all because of your uncivil behavior. In such circumstances, People have forgotten that the purpose of social events is to spend time with other persons, building a sense of camaraderie and community, and most of all, having fun. It may even be extended to raising the awareness of a particular issue so that support can be solicited for it. But, alas, because of a poor attitude, slowly an awareness dawns on you that you got it totally wrong. Well, in our gospel passage this evening, the Pharisees are on a mission to perfectly follow the letter of the law. They are trying to keep all the rules and make sure everyone else does as well. However, they too get it totally wrong because they have forgotten the reason 
or the spirit of the law. Reading these verses should make us aware that there is an entity and concepts far more important than many of the religious rituals and decrees which we clutch to so tightly. So what can we learn from Jesus regarding as to how we should view God, understand his laws, and how we should follow him? First up, God's guidance is not random or willy-nilly. God did not give us the commandments and laws just to see if we would follow them or not. God's laws are not irrational, but encompass a purpose in teaching. To many, sorry, to make all of us who would follow him aware of the true reality of the human condition. The awesomeness of God cannot be distilled down into a mere set of rules. In fact, we are completely missing what God is doing for us and in the world if we just boil him down to a bunch of rules to follow blindly. This is what Jesus is challenging the Pharisees to recognize in today's passage. They simply boil down being faithful to God as following commands and regulations and rules. There was no consideration for the development of a truly meaningful, loving relationship with God by man who was created in his image and likeness. Therefore, the Pharisees said that the disciples were breaking the law by picking heads of grain on the Sabbath. To this, Jesus replied to them, But if you had known what this means, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. How many times as a church, or as people, have we put obstacles and onerous burdens on persons who are simply seeking to work out their salvation? Rather than openly sharing ideas and beliefs and coming to a fuller understanding, we say to be ridiculous, if you can't read, you can't be part of this church. Did Jesus, while he was on earth, make it so difficult to come to an understanding of God and the Father? No. Jesus developed the idea of desiring mercy throughout his ministry. Later we will see Jesus say that the greatest command is the love of the Lord your God. And the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. When putting onerous demands on people, are we really loving them as we love ourselves? Or are we just simply being miserable and spiteful? Jesus then followed this by saying, on these two commandments, and all the law and the prophets. This means that all of God's law have the purpose of curbing sin and promoting love for God and for each other. The Pharisees, by stripping away God's purpose for his laws, ended up misinterpreting and misusing God's law. And in so doing, they were guilty of oppression of the Jewish people and condemnation of Jesus' disciples who were simply seeking to satisfy their hunger. We must look at God's laws as purposeful and reasoned from God's wisdom. God's laws about sexual sin, for example, having sin out of wedlock, 
are not random, but seek to curb sin and promote love of God, love of self, and loving each other. One reason this is so important for us to know is because we tend to break laws with impunity when we consider that they have no purpose. For example, a speed limit of 80 kilometers per hour is set on the Diego Martin Highway. For many, it makes no sense to drive so slowly. But what they do not see is this. This restriction is meant to save lives. The Digo Martin Highway is a winding, narrow road, and it passes through the middle of several residential areas, not to mention the fact that there is a river off to one side. So, when driving on this particular highway, there's little room to maneuver, without crashing into another vehicle or crashing into the river or even crashing into someone's residence. Likewise, God's laws have purpose and reason. So we should not break them because we think that they are random laws without reason. All of God's laws are purposeful so as to promote so as to promote loving God and showing love and forgiveness to others. God's laws about worship have purpose and reason and as you would have heard me say by now are not random. They are meant to help us come to know the Father. God's laws about sins like anger, hatred, and justice are not random, but have purpose and reason and seek to elevate humanity from its depravity. The next point which we need to look at is to recognize the purpose and reasoning behind God's laws. We need to do what Jesus said and learn what it means that he desires mercy, not sacrifice. We need to consider how God's rules are defeating sinfulness and promoting love for God and for others. We must understand that our obligations to God through his laws help us, sorry, we must understand that our obligations to God through his laws must be viewed through his desire for love, grace, and mercy so that we do not misunderstand or misapply these rules. In other words, we need to have a real understanding and knowledge of God and his character to properly apply his commands in all the various varying circumstances of this life. This is what Jesus is doing when he quotes Hosea 6 verse 6. For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offering. If everyone knew the character of God, then we would all understand, for example, the purpose of the Sabbath. The purpose of the Sabbath was not just to keep people from working. It was to cause us to spend time focused on God, worshiping Him, getting to know Him, and giving Him thanks and praise for the many graces that He bestows upon us. Brothers and sisters in Christ, there are circumstances when knowing God's law and character are absolutely critical to our understanding of what he would have us do. 
Jesus says that the priest who gave David and his men the bread of presence was right in his application of the law, even though under normal circumstances, doing such would be unlawful. Also, think about it. If it was that on the Sabbath, we were not meant to work, then what would you say about our clergy? When we come to church on weekends, Saturday, Sunday, or whenever we have services, are we breaking the Sabbath? Many people conveniently either overlook or miss this point. God's desire in all instances is to do good and alleviate human suffering. God's law does not have the purpose of preventing us from doing good as God defines it. Loving God and loving others as God defines love. There are reasons and purposes for God's law, and we must know God so that we can understand his laws and be able to apply them properly to our lives. The Pharisees thought that they were being correct in their application of the laws of Moses. Jesus tells them that they have condemned people who are without guilt. The Apostle Paul said in Romans 13, so we must know God and his character if we are going to accurately apply God's commands. This evening we started out talking about the desire that the Pharisees had for everyone to blindly follow the rules. Family in Christ, please do not focus only on the rules. Please think about how God's commands are guiding and transforming us in our love of God and love of each other. How can we exercise self-control to love God and love others? How can we flee the desires of temptation and sexual immorality? How does the need for repentance from sin express our love for God and love for others? God has given us what we need to defeat sin and to promote love from within our hearts. Please look at God's word in this way. Something more great, much greater than any law has come. And we see this in Jesus Christ, who reveals the Father to us, so that we can truly become his people and live in a way that glorifies him and brings glory to his kingdom. I have said these words to you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We now continue reciting the Apostles' Creed in our books of, found on page 69 in our books of common prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. We now turn to page 180, and we recite the collect for proper 24. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We now return to page 71 as we recite the second and the fourth prayers on that page. Light now darkness, Lord, we pray. And in your mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Grant, Lord, that we may be faithful to you without turning aside. Worship you without growing weary. Serve you without failing diligently seek you, happily find you, and forever possess you, the one and only God, blessed forever and ever. Amen. We now turn to page 82, and we say prayers for the victims of addiction. O oh, blessed Lord, you minister to all who came to you. Look with compassion on all who through addiction have lost their health and freedom. Restore to them the assurance of your unfailing mercy. Remove from them the fears that beset them. Strengthen them in the work of their recovery. And to those who care for them, give patient understanding and persevering love. Amen. For our homes and families, Heavenly Father, whose Son, Jesus Christ, born of a woman, sanctified childhood and shared the life of an earthly home, bless the homes and families of our nation. Give the parents a true sense of responsibility in the care and training of their children, that our boys and girls may grow up in the fear of your name and the fellowship of your church. For the glory of Christ our Lord. Amen. We also turn to page 77 as we recite the prayer attributed to St. Francis. Merciful God, to you we commend ourselves and all those who need your help and correction. Where there is hatred, give love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is sadness, joy. Where there is darkness, light. Grant that we may not seek so much to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving we receive, in pardoning we are pardoned, and it is in dying we are born into eternal life. We now return and we recite the prayer of dedication on page 73. Almighty God, 
We thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our path, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or conceive, by the power which is at work among us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all ages. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do have a blessed evening, everyone.